Jai Hind students. In the previous lecture, we have discussed the intro of differentiation, and then we have also discussed the physical meaning, the geometrical meaning, as well as some formulas related to differentiation. Right? In this lecture, what we will do is we will try to make use of differentiation in solving certain numericals and situations in physics. So. In the previous session, we have already discussed the instantaneous velocity that's given by the differential coefficient of displacement with respect to time. This is the instantaneous velocity, and this is read as differentiation of displacement with respect to time. Similarly, instantaneous acceleration that is given by the differential coefficient or the derivative of velocity. With respect to time. So, what I mean to say is that if a body is in motion and its displacement varies with time t through a given relationship, then with the help of that relationship, we can determine the velocity of the body. How? By differentiating the displacement with respect to time. And students, if the velocity of the body is known to us, then again by differentiating velocity with respect to time. We can easily determine the acceleration of the body. So I've shortlisted few of the questions, right, which are based on calculus. Before starting with these questions, let me tell you about some very very basic questions. Let's start with the first one. Let us assume a body is in motion and its displacement x varies with time t as suppose 2t square plus 3t minus 2. x is in meters and t suppose it is in seconds so what will be the velocity and what will be the acceleration right so what will do is velocity it is given by differentiation of displacement with respect to time so students here i will be using the differentiation directly two can be taken outside differentiation of t square with respect to t that will be twice t to the power 2 minus 1 right so what do we get is 4t plus We have already done differentiation, right? So here I have made use of the formula d by dt t to the power two is equal to t two minus one. That is twice t. That is what I have written. Twice t multiplied by two. That is four t. Plus three can be taken outside. Dt by dt is one, and constant differentiation constant is zero. So it will give us velocity four t plus three, right? Now suppose you are asked to determine the instantaneous velocity at the instant t equals to two seconds. So in that case, the velocity of the body at the instant t equals to two seconds would be four into two plus three. That would give us eleven meter per second. Understood, students? So if the displacement is given, then the velocity of the body can be easily determined by differentiating displacement with respect to time. Right? That's the application of differentiation. Now look, if the velocity is given, now v is given. V is given to be 4t plus 3. Now acceleration can be determined by again differentiating velocity with respect to time, because acceleration, instantaneous acceleration, is time rate change in velocity, and in calculus it is differential coefficient of velocity with respect to time. So let's differentiate this term again. So it will be differentiation of 4t plus 3. What do you get? Four being constant, it can be taken outside, and dt by dt would be one, so we'll be left with four plus d by dt of three. Three being constant would be zero. So acceleration is equal to four meter per second square. And students, look, the point to be noted over here is the acceleration is independent of the time. Whether we are talking about t equals to one second, t equals to two second, t equals to three second, the acceleration of the body being independent of t. Will remain same as 4 meter per second square. Now, since acceleration is constant, so students, what will be the nature of motion of the body? Yes, it will be uniformly accelerated motion. It will be uniformly accelerated motion. Clear? Where the speed of the uh, body or the velocity of the body changes at a constant rate. So, this is a pure application of differentiation. Let's consider another very simple example. Suppose <clears throat> there's a 
lot of people and in fact lot of ink on a paper and it expands it expands and it expands with time t by this relation a is equal to 3t square minus y again i am repeating the question suppose there is a blot of ink on a paper and it expands with the passage of time as for this relationship a is the area of the blot of ink on that paper at instant t what is the rate of increase of the area now look rate of increase of the area that is increase in the area per unit time so what you are supposed to find is da by dt rate of increase in the area of the blot of ink right so what to do da by dt it will be equal to differentiation of this term 3t square minus 1 so that will give you 3 let me do it step by step but students do practice so t square its differentiation with respect to t is 2t this being constant its differentiation is zero so you get 60 now if you are asked to find out the rate of increase of area at the instant t equals to 1 second so the answer would be 6 units if area is in centimeter square and time is in second so it will be centimeter square per second this will be the rate of change in the area so again that's an application of differentiation in solving problems in physics right so after discussing these basic questions we are in a position to solve these questions so let's try to attempt these questions First question is, students, please concentrate on the first question. First question is, a particle moving in SHM. SHM stands for simple harmonic motion. For the time being, uh, just consider SHM to be an oscillatory or vibratory motion. So a particle is executing vibratory motion, right? And it has a displacement given by x equals to 10 sine 5t minus pi by 6. What is the velocity when the displacement is eight units? What is the velocity when the displacement is eight units? That is what we are supposed to do. So displacement is given. Okay, let's start with the first question. So displacement is given. X is equal to ten sine five t minus pi by six. So we are supposed to find out the velocity when the displacement is eight units. When x is equal to eight units. then sin this is the argument part 5t minus pi by 6 it will be equal to x is 8 so it will be 8 by 10 or it would be 4 by 5 right so if you draw a triangle right angle triangle and suppose this angle is 5t minus pi by 6 sin is perpendicular by hypotenuse So it will be four units. It will be five units, and the base will be three units. Am I clear? Displacement is given to be eight units, and then we are supposed to find out the velocity. Now, student, look. Whenever the displacement of a body is given, then its velocity can be determined by differentiating displacement with respect to time. Right? So, velocity would be dx by dt. That is, ten sine. 5t minus pi by 6. So what do you do? 10 being constant, it can be taken outside. So differentiation of sine 5t minus pi by 6. So differentiation of sine is cos. So it will be cos the same term argument part that is 5t minus pi by 6. You remember student multiplied by d by dt of this particular term. That is 5t minus pi by 6. This is as per the chain rule. We have already discussed it in the previous lecture, right? So let's try to solve it. 10 cos 5t minus pi by 6 multiplied by. So you can solve it. 5 being constant, then taken out. So d by dt is 1. So we will have to find pi by 6 being constant. Its differentiation will be zero. So only 5 will be left. So 50. Cos 5t minus pi by 6. 50 multiplied by. Now look, cos 
angle is phi t minus pi by 6. Now, consider this right angle triangle. So, cos phi t minus pi by 6 would be base over hypotenuse. So, it will be equal to 3 by 5. Am I clear? Cos phi t minus pi by 6 would be base over hypotenuse. So, it will be 3 by 5. So, it will be equal to 10 into 3, that is 30 units. This is the answer. So, friends, this is a very, very important and very interesting question, right? Based on the application of derivatives. So, the velocity of the body when the displacement is 8 units would be 30 units. SI in SI it would be 30 meter per second. If X is measured in meter, T is measured in seconds. So that's the solution of the first quotient. Let's try, let's try the second quotient. Student just consider on the second quotient. E is the exponential over there. E is the exponential. The second question is a particle, a particle moving along the x axis has a position given by okay second question it has a position given by 10 t e to the power minus t this is given and x is in meters then how far is the particle from the origin when it stops momentarily now student consider on this sentence when it stops momentarily when the body stops it means that the velocity of the body at that instant would be zero so that's the condition we need to use over here, right? So, we need to find out the velocity and then velocity is to be equated to zero and then t can be easily sorted out, right? So, now in order to find velocity, what to do again, same, it's the time rate change in the displacement. So, it is 10 t e to the power minus t, 10 being constant can be taken outside. So we are left with t into e to the power minus t. These are the two functions. This is the first function, this is the second function. Now we have discussed, here we can make use of product rule. So let's do it. So as for the product rule, first function into differentiation of second function plus second function into differentiation of first function. Isn't it? I have made use of product rule. So let's proceed. Differentiation of e to the power x with respect to x is e x e to the power x. This is the formula. Differentiation of e to the power x is e x. This we have discussed. So over here let's try to apply the same formula. So it will be e to the power minus t into d by dt of minus t plus e to the power minus t. dt by dt is 1. So what do you get is 10 t e to the power minus t and this negative sign over here plus e to the power minus t. So what to do is e to the power minus t can be taken as common along with 10. So minus t plus 1. Right? This is the velocity. This we have simply derived. I mean we are by using differentiation. Again I am repeating if the displacement is given then the velocity of the body is given by the time rate change in its displacement. Now concentrate over here. When the body stops momentarily, then velocity is 0. Therefore, 10 e to the power minus t minus t plus 1 is equal to 0. Then either 10 can't be 0. So either this term is 0 or this term is 0. If e to the power minus t equals to 0, it will suggest that t equals to infinity. So it is avoided. Right? So the other condition is minus t plus 1 is equal to 0 which implies that t equals to 1 second. So student what we obtained is this body under consideration after 1 second it momentarily stops. After 1 second the body momentarily stops. So at that instant we are supposed to find the position of the body from the origin. Therefore after one second. After one second, the body momentarily stops. At this instant, we are supposed to find how far the particle is from the origin. So we are supposed to find x. So x at t equals to one second. So consider this one. So it is 10 t in place of t, you have to substitute 1. And over here, e to the power minus 1. 
so what do you get 10 divided by e meters this will be the answer so again this was a very very interesting question and here students we have made use of product rule so as to obtain the velocity from displacement so there is another very good question based on the application of derivatives <coughs> ok now concentrate on the third question these all are selected questions so please do practice these questions now concentrate on the third one third question is a particle is moving along a straight line according to the relation x square is equal to at square plus twice bt plus c a, b, c are constants. We are supposed to find its acceleration. So what will be the procedure? From displacement we can find velocity and from velocity we will have to find acceleration. That's the process. So it is given by x square is equal to a, t square plus twice b, t plus c. Now look, let's differentiate with respect to t. So like this. We will differentiate the above equation with respect to t. So as to get the velocity. Right? Here a, b, c are constants. What is the differentiation x square with respect to t? It will be 2x into dx by dt. Over here. Let us solve it with respect to t. It will be twice a t. a will come out and differentiation of t square with respect to t would be twice t. Plus 2b being constant will come out, so dt by dt would be 1. So we will be left with 2b. C being constant, its differentiation will be 0. Right? So dx by dt, 2 can be taken as common, so we get at plus b divided by x. So put this as equation number 1. And obviously dx by dt is velocity. So put this as equation 1. I hope students this first step is clear. Displacement is given. So acceleration of the body can be easily determined. Simply by differentiating displacement with respect to time. Right? Okay. This is the expression for the velocity. Our objective or mission is to determine its acceleration. So velocity is given by this. So what about acceleration then? It is given by time rate change in the velocity. That is differential coefficient velocity with respect to time. So this is it. In place of we substitute this above value. Now students, which rule is to be used? Yes, quotient rule. You have to make use of quotient rule. So let's make use of that rule. So it will be denominator square, that is x square. Then denominator multiplied by differentiation of numerator minus numerator into differentiation of denominator. This is the formula which I have used, which is known as quotient rule. So let's keep solving it. A can be taken out being constant, dt by dt is 1, so we will be left with A. And B being constant, its differential will be 0, right? So we will be left with x into A. Minus A t plus B. What about dx by dt? Its velocity. Divided by x square, right? So acceleration can be written as x a divided by x square it would be a by x x a divided by x square it would be a by x minus a t plus b divided by x square multiplied by v right ok now what to do is we need to express the answer in terms of a b c and x isn't it so what to do is you can substitute the value of v from equation 1 in equation 2 substitute the value of v a t plus b by x in equation 2 so we get acceleration is equal to a by x minus a t plus b a t plus b and the value of v is a t plus b divided by x so it will become whole square divided by x square multiplied by x it will give us so students, this is the answer. This is the answer. This is the acceleration of the point. When its displacement is given to us. So, this is
This was again a very very good portion requiring quotient theorem. This is where we have made use of quotient theorem. This is in the form of uh, p by q division. So here we have to make use of quotient theorem, right? So there comes the importance of mathematical tools in physics. <coughs> Students, let's pro proceed further. Question number four. Just read the question. A particle moving along a straight line, a particle moving along a straight line has a velocity of v meter per second when it has cleared a distance of x meters, right? And these two are connected by the relation v equals to root 49 plus x. So in the fourth question, velocity is given. It's given to be root 49 plus x. This is given. Find the acceleration of the particle when its velocity is 1 meter per second. Right? So this is given. And we are supposed to find the acceleration. So over here, what we do is, we can consider acceleration to be given by differential coefficient of velocity with respect to time. So it will be d by dt. Velocity is 49 plus x root that is to the power half. So we know the formula. It can be taken as u u to the power n. It's equal to n u n minus one multiplied by du by dt. Right? So same thing we'll be using over here. So it will be half 49 plus x half minus one multiplied by differentiation of this term, which is considered to be u. I made use of the chain rule directly. So what do you get? Half 49 plus x half minus 1 will be minus half. And then differentiation of 49 which is constant is 0 and dx by dt. Over here we get dx by dt. So it can be written as 1 by 2 square root of 49 plus x and dx by dt is velocity. dx by dt is velocity. Right? Okay, now look. find the acceleration of the particle when its velocity is 1 meter per second. Now, velocity from equation 1, velocity is already given to be root 49 plus x divided by 2 root 49 plus x. So it will become half. So it is 0 0.5 in SI, it will be meter per second square. Is that clear? So here, students, acceleration is found to be 0.5 meter per second square. So here velocity was given and acceleration was needed to be found, right? So it can be done by differentiating velocity with respect to time, right? So it is 0 0.5 meter per second square. So let's try the fifth one. Fifth question is again a quite interesting one. So let's try this question. The displacement of the body is x while the time that is given by t and suppose both are in SI, the displacement of the body is given in meters while the time is measured in seconds. So the relationship between displacement and time of the body is given to be t equals to root x plus 3. This is the relationship between displacement and time. Find displacement of the particle when its velocity is 0, right? It's given. When the velocity is 0, we are supposed to find that instant when the velocity is 0 and then substitute the value of that t over here, we will get the value of x. That should be our approach, right? So let's do it. Here students, we need to find out velocity, right? So that we can equate velocity to be equal to 0. So for that, just try to rearrange the terms. Can it be written like this? Let's make it simple. It can definitely be written in this particular manner. Now squaring both the sides, we can also write it like this, t minus 3 whole square. Now look, it's in the form of a minus b whole square, which is a square minus 2ab, that will be 60 plus b square. Clear? So, now velocity can be easily obtained. Velocity is dx by dt, which will give us d by dt of t square minus 60 plus 9. I'll do it directly. Differentiation t square with respect to t would be twice t. Minus 6 being constant can be taken outside and dt by dt is 1. Plus differentiation of constant 9 is 0. So velocity is 2t minus 6. Clear students? 
velocities to t minus 6. Now, here it's written, we are supposed to find the displacement of the particle when the velocity body is 0. So, if v is equal to 0, then 2t minus 6 is equal to 0, which implies that 2t equals to 6, which further implies that t equals to 3 seconds. So, students, it means that the body comes to rest or it stops at the instant t equals to 3 seconds. And as per the question, we are supposed to find out the displacement of the particle at the instant t equals to 3 seconds. So, therefore, x at t equals to 3 seconds, this is to be determined. Right? So, consider this equation. So, from first, we get x at t equals to 3 seconds, it will be equal to t square, that is 3 square minus 60, that is 6 into 3 plus 9. So, we get 9 minus 18 plus 9, that is 0. So, students, the answer of the fifth question is 0. The displacement of the body is 0 at the instant when its velocity is also 0. Right? And we are aware displacement can be 0, it can be negative, it can be even positive. So, these were some selected portions which were based on the applications of derivatives. The students, I request you to practice more such questions and eventually in kinematics we will be dealing with further, I mean some very very good questions based on differentiation. Actually differentiation is a very very important mathematical tool, right, which we will be frequently using in the subsequent chapters. So I hope you have understood this topic uh, uh, very well and uh, keep practicing, keep practicing such questions and all the very very best then, right, we will continue in the next session and we will continue with some other mathematical tool which is integration. Now here I must mention if you are fully aware of all the formulas of differentiation then there is no need to remember the formulas for integration, it will eventually come because integration we will discuss is the inverse process of differentiation. So knowing the formula of differentiation will be sufficient to remember the formulas for integration, right? So with that I conclude this session, we will continue in the next lecture, right? Thank you.